Welcome to JWL Sports, where we review all the best sports clips from around the world. If this is your first time checking out a video, please do consider subscribing. We are building an amazing community here, and I would absolutely love to see you part of it. Um, we're watching a clip of Undisputed talking about the Philadelphia 76ers and Joel Embiid, and whether or not he's going to be able to return for the playoffs, and what does this mean for the Sixers. A lot of people have forgotten about the Sixers, um, because of course Embiid got hurt, and now the other teams are kind of rolling, right? The Celtics, the Bucks, um, you know, Minnesota, the Denver Nuggets. But people are sleeping on the Sixers. The Sixers were a legit team that was catching their stride. They've added a couple key um, players. And Embiid was absolutely bought out. Embiid was on path to be the MVP. And this was not up for a debate. Any average fan, media member, even other players. I mean, Embiid was on a historical tear, you know, doing things that we've never even seen, you know, some of the biggest names in basketball, like Wilt Chamberlain do. I mean, just insane things, insane, insane, insane. So people for people forget, and I understand, you know, at this point it was, you know, a couple of months ago, you know, it's, it may as well have been three years ago. So I, I get it, but there is a legitimate true chance that Embiid comes back, and if Embiid is able to be back 100%, that the Sixers are going to be a legitimate, fierce team in the playoffs. And my whole opinion has been that Embiid struggles with the length of a season just because of his body. It's just the way it is. It's just, you know, the luck of the dice, you know, the roll of the dice, luck of the draw. And now he's going to be going into the playoffs fully well rested and should be in theory fully healthy which means he is going to be ferocious so i would anticipate him to be truly able to ball out and nick nurse is a really good coach and you know we'll be able to integrate him hopefully smoothly so be on the lookout for the sixers but let's take a listen to see this conversation and we'll break it down further from there L.A., two very questionable late calls, way too much Kawhi in the fourth quarter, finally did in the Sixers, but the Sixers do expect Embiid to return before the end of the regular season, so Rachel, if he does, how big a threat will the Sixers be in the East? I think it really depends on when he comes back and what kind of conditioning shape he's in when he gets there, because well, here's the thing, question. the Sixers had the second easiest schedule for the rest of the way, so that's set up for them to do well. They're only a couple games out of sixth place. If he can come back, if he can mm -hmm. play well enough to, quote, work his way into shape, mm -hmm. and they get a first-round matchup against Cleveland, against New York, well, you could make the argument still that Joel Embiid is the best player on the court, even in a state where he hasn't played in a while. And then Absolutely. if that happens, we always say in the NBA, the team with the best player on the court is usually the team that's favored. If they are able to just make it out of the play-in and end up in, like, the eighth spot, or if they are in the play-in and they're mired in that and they have to play a couple games just to get to eight or seven, well, then all of a sudden you're playing Boston in the first round. Mm -hmm. I don't give them much shot against Boston in the first round with a Joel Embiid that's only a few games back. So to me, it depends on how quickly can he really come back. And I sat with Nick Nurse just the other day, mm -hmm. and we talked about this quite a mm -hmm. bit. And he thinks, first of all, it's an emotional boost, obviously, when yeah. Joel comes on the floor, what he's going to give to the other guys, and just sort of the defensive attention he's going to take up, no matter what kind of shape he's in, that is going to let some of these other guys flourish. And when you look at their strength of schedule, that's really the key. If they can get themselves to that sixth spot then he can work his way in over a couple weeks and maybe they can make a run if they can't i don't see it happening so you figure he hasn't played since january 30th mm -hmm. so let's just call it february mm -hmm. so march mm -hmm. and let's call it april mm -hmm. that's three months give or take that's a long time a long time to be riding a bike so to speak it's a, it's if, just a if that if that yeah. that's just a long time for him to be in shape. Yeah, is he going to be a defensive presence because of his body and his size there? But he still got to move around, still got to run the floor, still got to get up and down. There's things that he still have to do. So I don't I don't know that bringing him back is going to make a big difference because he's missed so much time. Oh my it's God, hard as athletes take. to miss... Ex what are you... How are you saying that you're going to bring back Joel Embiid and it's not going to make that much of an impact? Do you know how absurd and stupid a comment like that is? Joel Embiid is a monster. Whether you love the Sixers or hate the Sixers, whether you love Joel Embiid or hate Joel Embiid, the idea that he's not going to have a tremendous impact coming back is insanity. Insanity. Okay? The dude's having like 70-point games. He was embarrassing 
The defensive players of the year, Gobert and Wembenyama, putting up, I mean, like, just, just sunning them, totally treating them like they, like they're in high school. So please, spare this nonsense. Yes, conditioning is a real thing. And, and what people also don't realize is, is that he's been able to move and run around and do stuff and ride the bike. He's probably been riding the bike since the second week after his surgery. So he's been on the bike. He's been doing cardio. He's been running, walking on the treadmill. You do. I rehabbed my meniscus injury not once, not twice, three times. So I know exactly what the rehab and recovery process is like. And I didn't have access to 24-7 rehab like he does, right? I had two to three visits a week for X amount of weeks. He's getting true treatment every single day, multiple times a day. So he you, he is working on his cardiovascular. He's been shooting. I mean, he's doing all that type of stuff. I'm not going to tell you, sit here and tell you that he has no issue, that there's not going to be any type of deficit. I think, of course, there will be. But this idea that he's just not going to be able to like get into this game shape or that it's just, oh, it's one, two, three months, and he's done. Dude, the dude's been balling at the highest level for years okay this is like i mean just it's unbelievable to watch them try to bury him before he's even done anything significant amount of time and not have a significant amount of time to get ready to get back into things it's just like the lakers the lakers are missing guys if they get them back what you know how how much are they going to contribute and this is the same thing with joel how much is he going to contribute to the team when he comes back that's the key his shape is the key and well, that is why Philly is going. He's also not like a Steph Curry running up and down the court, left and right, left and right, left and right. He's a big man, okay? He's a big man. He jogs up and down the court here, you know? My God. Nowhere slowly. So you think no matter what? Nowhere. I oh, love God. watching Tyrese Maxey. Last night, the Clippers had no answer for him until finally they said, we got to put two or three people on him. I like Kelly Oubre. I, I enjoy watching this team play, Batum and Tobias. It, but, but still, it becomes all about Joel. He's never been dedicated to keep himself in any kind of shape. And I'm oh, pretty sure yes. I, 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 this is. He is a monster. He works out so hard. It's just his body. He is so physically fit. It's just on the unfortunate reality. He's been getting hurt since he was in like ninth grade here. So this idea that he hasn't been dedicated to his body, he cares about the game of basketball so much. When he's like got his face broken, like his literally orbital fracture, you know, concussions and all this, his knee, he still goes out and tries to play. He plays through all of these injuries. So this idea, like that's that actually really annoys me because you're now putting the onus on Joel Embiid. That's like blaming someone for getting cancer. Oh, he got cancer. It's his fault. That drives me insane. Are there some factors that you have control over, right? If you eat healthy and you get, get a good diet and you exercise and you do all these things, can you reduce your risk of getting heart disease and cancer and diabetes and all these things? Absolutely, right? But it still can happen, okay? Not all people who get injured or who, me, I'm a great example of this. I do everything to keep my physical fitness is so important to me. So important to me, so important to me, so important to me. I am all about it. I work out all the time, eat right, do everything I can. And yet I still got injured endless times. I couldn't even count right now. Mo many, many, many surgeries couldn't even count right now, okay? It has nothing to do with that, okay? The dude is a dog. He cares so much, okay? They literally smashed his face. His eyeball is falling out of the socket and he's still trying to play, okay? He tore his meniscus before and still continued to play. Uh, I think it was last season. So this idea that he doesn't care, he's up in the work, if that was the case, then he wouldn't play. He would say, yeah, I hurt my knee and you know, doctor says I can't play. And then that was it. But instead, he goes out there and does everything everything he can i remember the one time when he when he broke because he broke the bone in his eye socket like multiple times and then he got hit in the face when he was wearing that mask and he was laying on the floor in such agony and it was true agony it wasn't trying to milk for some sort of you know flagrant foul or whatever it was the fact that his face is broken and then he took like an elbow or a hand to it so that is is obnoxious that just shows you that you don't really know anything about him you don't watch any of the games and you just think that he's a big guy he plays basketball he's really good but he gets injured and so you just blame him 
This isn't a lack of effort. This isn't Zion, you know, who's overweight. I've met Joel Embiid up in person. I've seen him. The dude is in peak physical condition. He is an absolute monster. It's just his body type. It's difficult to go up and down the court, up and down the court. And he's injury prone. Whatever that means on a genetic basis, which we don't even understand fully. It just is how it is. A lot of times it is just sheer luck. That is just an ignorant statement to make. And honestly, it's infuriating to hear. An educated guess that he's not in much shape as we speak. Uh, I, I would probably bet on that. Yeah. He, he has done a better job. And you have to give him credit. He's done a better job in that area in the past couple of years. He has. He wouldn't have won MVP, MVP yeah, without Rachel. it. Rachel. Hey. He didn't he sit has. out three months, though. I'm just saying, when you talk about his habits, his no, habits I know, but when he won MVP, he won those There was those a point where Nikola Jokic months. was drinking two or three Coca-Colas a day. He yeah. stopped. He his body like changed. He two two acting like he's not <laughs> dedicated to basketball. Definitely changed his this habits to a degree. But to your point, that doesn't matter when there's an injury, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I think that the idea that he could come out and just be the Joel that he was that, that's impossible. It's, However, we have seen t teams and players play themselves into shape. Oh, yeah, absolutely. In the playoffs, if the opponent isn't as good, and that's really where this comes into question here. If they play the Chicago Bulls in the play-in with Joel Embiid, even just a few, yeah, maybe a week that. or two off the bench, yeah. wouldn't you still give it to them, right? So well, I mean, I get... there's, there's, there's scenarios here where they can advance. It's just a question of how far, when do they run into the Boston buzzsaw? Because, by the way, they weren't favored in a series against Boston with Embiid playing at the level, at the historic, crazy level that he was before he got hurt. So I You're just talking think about it's, last yeah. year. No, I mean, oh, even the middle oh, of this year, yeah. right? Oh, oh, can, they win a, can they win a play-in uh, a play game? Of course they can, Rachel. Yeah. They can win a play-in game with him playing minim minimum minutes. Mm -hmm. They can certainly do that, but it gets into that seven-game stretch. Yes. And it's, it gets into the long haul of being able to try to play and Who run are they up and down facing? the floor. Are they facing the Cleveland Cavaliers in the mm. first round? Is Donovan Mitchell 100% himself or even in the game? I mean, there's just a lot of questions. Yeah. I understand why Philadelphia is trying to do this. Talking to Nick Nurse, he feels, they feel like, hey, you get Joel back in there. You don't know. We could see what could yeah, happen there. I didn't realize there. the and Magic I, was sitting in five. I get there. The Magic there. could go up to three, by the way. No, I didn't realize that. I'm looking, I'm like, huh? 32 uh, and 30. Yes. They're, they're, yeah, I didn't realize 100%. that. 100%. Okay. If, if we have them, do we do we have the two controversial plays? Let's take a quick look at the, the first one is Kawhi on Kelly Oubre and Kelly gets a step on him and then Kawhi at the rim meets him and it's shaky. It's kind of a wedgie here for a second. Yeah. See, I thought that was a foul. Yeah, because he pushed him I in the back first. It. I thought he got he pushed it. him in the back right there. Yeah. See, he got his forearm on him, yeah. and it's I thought he got Maybe he didn't hand foul him, but he body well, fouled him right. and pushed yeah, him. Yeah, that one was not as egregious, though, as I've Oh, uh, to me, I call it egregious because if you look at his, if you look at his left, look at that. He yeah. pushes him yeah. with his left elbow. He's right. pushing him in the back. Okay, so they called that one. Oh, how do we get to And people no, they did not call. don't realize that that's actually one of the most dangerous plays when you're going up and jumping. The the littlest bit of an of a push can send you flying and you can get messed up if you do that and you're playing on the streets or something it's like it's you better be careful where the heck you're playing because i mean my god you could lose your life so it, it's it's you know it's such an underrated thing because you, you you're so vulnerable you're in the air the littlest bit of a push i mean can just can you can get messed up all that when they call jump ball. That's what I'm saying. They called a jump ball. So now Philly won the the jump and got the ball back. So now let's see the end of game play against Paul George. Now the ref said after the game that they missed this one. So in real time, what do we see here? Okay, there is contact, but Paul's trying to go straight up. But there is some body contact. Yes, the what the said is that you know upon looking again, he leans it. Well, okay, they're kind of talking about two different things now. They just s transitioned into the game from the controversial call. But, um, you know, the reality is, is this is the way this take reads to me, is that, well, first off, I don't really care about Keyshawn Johnson's opinion on basketball. Uh, you know, that's just me. And same thing with Skip. I mean, I think these guys are very football heavily based, which I understand, obviously, Key being a football player and and skip Bayless, um, you know, football pays the bills, right? Football is the number one sport. And it's just like them not really following or understanding and and just kind of just giving these like blankets. You know, like Keyshawn Johnson's just like, he hasn't played in three months. Okay, yes, that's what happens when you get injured. I mean, Steph Curry literally gets, you know, surgery 
um, has to come back, come off the bench, has Jordan Poole start, and they win the finals. They win the championship. And that's a lot more conditioning that Steph Curry needs and get back to his shooting form. It's, it's, a, it's a different type of play. Joel Embiid just needs to be, you know, be in a place where he can't get, you know, injured again, right? Where, like, the, the injury is healed to the point where, you know, if he gets, like, pushed or something, it just doesn't, you know, snap, which obviously, you know, it's not going to. So, in terms of his conditioning, yes, it, it'll take him a minute. Running up and down a court and shooting and jumping is different than just being on the bike, being on the bike. He's doing more than being on the bike. Again, I know he got injured January 30th, which means he probably got his, you know, surgery within that first week or so of February. So it's all of February, um, pretty much all of March. That is two full months. At that point, you pretty much, if you're not a professional athlete, put it this way. If you are not a professional athlete, insurance is no longer covering your recovery they're done. You've been discharged. I mean, unless you had some serious complications and serious setbacks, or you have a physical therapist who really kind of wants to keep you around and they'll kind of, you know, cause you have to take these, um, questionnaires that monitor your progress, um, in order for insurance to cover it. And they need to see like, you know, where are you at in your functionality? Insurance will say, okay, you're good. And then they, and then you're done. And then you're done. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just, it just, that, that that really what it is you you get about two months maybe slightly more but for the most part no so he's going to be pretty much as 100 percent as you can get come time playoffs and so again conditioning will be weird the pounding on it the soreness the next day and uh, and, and of that nature can be kind of problematic but I just don't think it's going to be as much of a detriment as these people are making it out to be, quite honestly. I should when I say these people, I meant like people in general. I not necessarily these three right here, but they it's it's going to be a legit um they're gonna be a legit um threat to to win some games and win some series. I, I really truly do believe that. Um and especially Embiid's style of game. He's able, he's been able to continue to work out, especially his upper body, keep himself conditioned. Um, you know, he's been able to do every upper body workout that he needs to do. And even the lower body at this point, at this point of his recovery, he's squatting 100% of the weight that he could have squatted before the injury. I mean, that's just a fact. Unless he's had setbacks, if he could squat, again, making up numbers here, 300 pounds for 15 reps. He is squatting right now 300 pounds for 15 reps. That's just the that's the recovery process. That's where he's going to be at in this recovery, okay? Um, the only way it's not is if he had a different recovery approach, which I did do one time, but that is not what I believe he did, and it's not what I would ever do again, is where they completely keep you 100% you know, non-weight-bearing after the surgery for like six weeks, and then you start to do the rehab. And then there's the other way that the moment you get surgery, you're actually what you walk out, you know, you have the brace on, but you walk out and you can't bend your knee. And then every day, you know, you take off the brace, you do some, you do little by little by little by little by little exercise, you, you start riding the bike, like literally like a week or two after surgery. And you know, and, and you, you'd be shocked. Like it's, it, it, it just goes, it's a snowball effect. You know, you do recover a lot quicker than you really believe. Like on one minute, you're like, oh my God, I can barely do anything. And then within like two weeks, you're like, wow, like I feel pretty good. My muscle is clearly still atrophied and weaker and I clearly still feel some pain, but you're just like, it's like nothing. Like you're, you're, you're living your life almost like, like everything's all good. So, and again, that's someone like me who doesn't have superior genetics who doesn't have a round the clock 24 seven, you know, massage and stim and physical therapist, massage therapist, all that type of stuff, you know? So although I did use the same facilities and the same companies as the 76ers and the Eagles. So I will say that it is the same, you know, um, uh, you know, like physical therapy group. So, you know, but um, I just don't have access to it seven days a week, like Joel and B does. So, um, they're totally, uh, you know, underestimating the amount of recovery someone like Joel will be able to do in the amount of time that he has 
been given. But those are just my thoughts. I would absolutely love to hear yours. Do you think Joel Embiid and the 76ers will be anything come time in the playoffs? Let me know in the comments below. I read every single comment. So whether you agree with me or disagree with me, either way, let's get into some discussions. Let's get into some fights. But ultimately, let's just have some fun. And please do consider subscribing. We are building an amazing community here, and I would absolutely love to see you part of it. I want to build something that we were that we all genuinely feel connected to something that we're really excited to be part of, and I think we're well on our way to doing it. And please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up as it really does help with the visibility and the algorithm. And if you're watching this video, that means a whole bunch of other videos have been published. I literally post like four, five, six, seven, eight videos a day. So definitely click around. I'm sure there's other shows that I've done or other just topics that I've done that you'll be interested in. So click around and I'm sure you'll find something that you like. Thank you so much and see you next time.